And I guess the thrill for me to go to those tracks is, is I get to, you know, a seat where nobody else gets to sit. It was terrible. We brought it to the Melner Car Wash, and I don't think the Melner Car Wash will ever be the same again. I love the races. It's racing like my life, yeah. <laughs> so in it's first, awesome first, to work here. Yeah. Uh, pretty much put in the last couple of years, put on about every fire out here. Found another racetrack, picked it up. It's been with me every day, every ever since and it doesn't rain on Sunday since I picked it up. I got tons. I could take up the whole show with rituals and tradition. You might not know his name, but you've probably seen him in the middle of the action at the racetrack. Todd Torfin has created a summer hobby out of two things he loves, racing and photography. I got into racing through my dad. Um, him and I would go, every Saturday night we'd go to the track in Alexandria to Viking Speedway. And we'd go up there and we'd go in the pits after the races and always hanging out with a number of the drivers. Uh, a couple of them, uh, Gary Rents and Jim McMahon back then were two of the racers that we always followed. Uh, you know, we went every Saturday night and then uh, one story I have from then, uh, in 74, uh, my dad wanted me to go to the races and I didn't want to go. And so I said, well, I gave in. We went to the races and it was kids night. And we got there and they were giving away the Fan of the Week trophy every week back then. And so it came time to give that trophy away and they called my name and I about fell off my seat. Had to go down in front of the whole crowd and, and get my trophy and, and the cool thing about that was is that you know the drivers voted on it so it was something that you really were a fan of the week because the drivers knew you were there, came down in the pits and were up there cheering them on. Uh, we'd go every week and then as I got older we kind of got away from going to the track and then uh, you know, a number of years ago, I got back into saying, oh, I want to go back to the races and I, my love of photography, I started going out to the fairgrounds out here to Red River Valley Speedway and uh, had a, just a basic camera and started taking some pictures from the stands and a uh, gal in the office said, you know, I sent her my photos and she said, well, why don't you come back next week and take some more photos? So I went back and took some more. and. I wasn't really happy with a lot of stuff that I was doing. I knew I needed better equipment. So I decided, well, if I'm going to get into this, I'm going to buy a bigger camera and, you know, get into it. Talked to some people that had been doing it, said, you got to do this, you got to have that. So went out, did that, and then started taking pictures, got a press pass from all the dirt, uh, started turning pictures into them, and then just kind of snowballed from there, started going to other racetracks. And, you know, and then just kept going with it. I started to do driver cards and and learning how to do that. So I branched out into doing more of that and then um, sponsor photos and different things. And I guess for a racer, you know, they have a home track and I have a home track, which would be Glendon, uh, Buffalo River Race Park. Um, so I kind of, you know, that's one track that I'm at every week. Uh, I go there, but I'll go down to Alexandria, I'll go to, you know, Fergus opened up last year. And I guess the thrill for me to go to those tracks is, is I get to, you know, a seat where nobody else gets to sit. Uh, you get close to the action, you're in behind the scenes. And I think the biggest thing about it is, is that, you know, I get to talk to some of the nicest people around. And they're just, uh, they'll talk to you and they'll tell you what's going on with their racing career. and. And it's just fun to talk to people because they're always, 
you know, talking about racing and, you know, what's going on. And then, you know, they'll come up to you and say, hey, I like your photos from last week or I saw your photos. They'll pay you a compliment, which to me is, you know, better than anything I'd ever sell because when people say, hey, I like your work, uh, you know, that, that makes a difference in what you do. And then last year I had a couple of photos that I had for a rollover in Glendon where they, for the legends, um, one of the guys that rolled over, his arm came out of the window. And so my photo kind of helped change some of the rules that they had based on arm restraints and things like that. So when you can do that and make a difference, you know, that really helps and it really kind of solidifies what you're doing to, that you're not there just to make money or to, for your own gain. You know, my philosophy is I'm there to get the track, you know, publicity, to get them in the, all the dirt and to you know, help them you know, get a name out there to show people that, hey, this is a racetrack you want to come and race at. And there have been times where I've had uh, moms email me and say, you know, I can't be at the racetrack, um, and I, my son races, and when I see your photos, it's like I'm at the racetrack, and so that makes you feel good. You know, they can see the story of what happened to them that night. And then when you get those emails, sometimes you're like, I'm going to take a couple extra pictures just because you know that they are watching for those photos. So sometimes I try to get that extra, you know, I go a little bit extra for that person. And the thing is, is I've never taken a photography class. I pretty much just read books, took the camera and started to learn it and experiment and see what goes right and what goes wrong. And even some nights I'm not I mean, I'm like the racer. I may not have everything set up perfect, but I try to get everything as right as possible, and there's so many conditions that may go into it. And so I think the love of that and then being able to be around the racing and, and being close to the action is, you know, just, it, it's a perfect hobby for me. Yeah, it's the best part. You get uh, you get a seat right in the infield and get to watch the whole race. It's a uh, pretty easy gig, actually. The Racing Life is sponsored by Performance Auto, Jamestown Speedway, Valley Alignment and Repair, Quality Engines, Red River Kart Club, Red River Valley Speedway. Here is the Racing Life's Question of the Week. The safety officials are a very important part of the races. From the tow truck drivers to the EMTs, these people are always working hard to make sure everyone is safe. Here are a couple interviews we did with safety crew members last summer. It's a FM ambulance out here every Sunday night for the races, uh, and then it's uh, different people that can cover it every week. Okay. So. Is, does it go on a volunteer basis, or do you get assigned? Uh, it's it's um, you can bid for it and. Uh, Anybody that's available to do it can put in a bid for it and then um, goes by seniority from there. Okay. So, do you yeah. bid to come out here? Oh yeah. Do you? Mm -hmm. okay. Oh yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep. So you probably get to watch a 
the all the race. Yeah, it's the best part. You get uh, you get a seat right in the infield and get to watch the whole race. It's a yeah. uh, pretty easy gig, actually. Yeah. 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 And is there any uh, particular class that you like to watch the most, or any particular? Uh, yeah, I. Um, I know the Sours through a couple of different friends, so I, I root, for, root for the Sours always. Okay. Yeah. So Ronnie and Travis, you know, yeah. Trevor. We got our radios on, and uh, and I got a, a, the pit crew gives me a gives me a radio, oh, cool. so um, I'm all, they're always able to get in touch with me if they need me, and uh, you know those are the guys that that I kind of rely on. They know. They know a lot more about racing than I do, so. So you have a good line of communication going on if you're needed. Yep, somewhere. yep, exactly. Yep, yep. I'll, they'll kind of, you know, they'll probably be the first ones there if something did happen, and and uh, they'd be able to tell me right away if I need if they needed some more help or not. How'd you get the nickname Loopy? Well, sometimes they said I get kind of loopy, so it just stuck. It so. just stuck. I have them lined up. And what's your uh, what's your job mainly out here? I'm a turn one official, and then whenever cars have problems, where they. Uh, you know, if they get in a wreck, pull Ken off and help them out and help with the lineups. And, and uh, I have race receivers. If the drivers have problems with their race receivers, I can change them out for them. Okay. So when you're, what, what are some of the things that you look for when when you're when you're watching the race? And, you know, to see like a potential accident. Yeah. Or if they're like on, if they're single files, you know, you can try to look where there's a pack of cars more. That's where the problems are going to be, and then try to determine whose fault it was. And, and then the caution gets or the caution gets called on them, so they go tail end. Or if we've had too many, then they go to the pits. So, so do you? We do have a couple more at their trailer. I'm sure you know that you know you know there's some the rivalries in some of the classes. So is there? You just kind of tell us a little bit about. You don't have to name anybody, but you you could probably tell when maybe things are getting a little heated, and uh, you know maybe there yeah, might be uh, some kind of dirty racing going on. Sometimes it carries from week to week or track to track, and. Usually, you've heard about it if you didn't see it yourself, so you know who to kind of keep an eye on. But and do you think at the end of the year people start racing crazier because it's getting towards the end now? Yeah, everybody's chasing points and, and yeah, not as worried about the car. Or... What what's some of the worst worst wrecks you've seen or some really bad incidents you've seen? Anything that comes to your mind? Well, that... This this year here, the one legend we had that rolled real hard right here, and he was knocked out pretty bad. So we. We had a couple of pretty bad rollovers this year, mm -hmm. and a couple of fires, and yeah, yeah. And so you you uh, have the fire extinguisher you, extinguisher on you at all times. Yeah, I, just, I stand with one, and I got one on the four wheeler. And if it's anywhere around here, I'll just run to it. Anywhere else, I'll jump on the four wheeler. So I can... Somebody said that your uh, Dwayne said that he offered to put you in the flag stand, but you said you had to be down in the middle I, of the action. I kind of like it better with down here help helping the drivers and then being on the safety crew. Mm -hmm. And he said if there's ever a fire, you're the first one there. Usually, Carl Carl beat me to one this year, so. <laughs> but you got a pretty good record, I take it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, pretty much put in the last couple of years put out about every fire out here, but. So you must really enjoy it then. What's something that you really enjoy about coming out here and doing this job? My, from when I was born, my dad raced, so I've been involved in racing my whole life. I, I raced a few different classes of cars too, and pitted on some sprint cars, and I just, it's a good way to get a, be involved in it. We don't get to watch very much, like you said. Right, right. We're usually pretty busy, either feeding the rest of them or feeding everybody that's down here. The Racing Life is sponsored by Dakota Cat, Peterman Seeds, Randall's Excavating, Cheyenne River Kennels, I-94 Speedway. Here are the Racing Life's fan pictures of the week.
When we started the racing life, we wanted to show all aspects of the races, and one of those are the concession stand workers. They might not get to see who wins each night, but they know what the drivers and the fans like to eat. Here are some of those people behind the scenes and the track favorites. I think the feedback's been excellent. We tried to do a, cute, a few key items that would sell and which were good and a lot of people have liked the food here and we got the pizza pockets which were a big hit last summer. So we brought them here and we have our racer nachos which everybody loves. And I think our food out here is going really well. And we got homemade pizza out here and we just tried to do a few different things that people would enjoy. very much like you said right it, right we're usually pretty busy either feeding the rest of them or feeding everybody that's down here yeah yeah and uh were you guys working uh, the night that uh the nascar drivers were out here oh with god Tony yeah and yeah Kenny that and was that was busy <laughs> busy night <laughs> really busy for you yeah with tony stewart night was really busy so yeah but it was fun yeah. i have been here for two years and this is my first year here so what are some of the favorites, uh, the fan favorites and the driver favorites? Uh, racer taco and racer nacho. Kind of a theme of what we do for, um, you can explain what's in it. Uh, the racer taco is crushed chips on the bottom and then it's got lettuce and meat. Yep. And There's, the main thing is that it's chili instead yeah. of the taco meat, which is what is the main thing in the taco in the bag. So we like to switch it up and we'll put it in a bowl instead of, uh, instead of the taco in a bag. So that's one of your best sellers? Yep, yes, that's definitely. Kind of for both. Um, pops sometimes vary, like tonight, things will come and go like as favorites. Like tonight yeah, it's, it's been water and Mountain Dew, yeah. I'd say. And tonight yeah. it's been uh, nachos and chili. We've seen that a lot. Right? Yeah. 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 So do you have any fans um, that are regulars or drivers oh, that yes. are regulars that yes. come up? Can you tell definitely. us a little bit about that? Um, the people that I see a lot, they're just like really nice and just excited to be here. And one lady said to me tonight, she's like, oh, I have to have my racer taco. It's my favorite every week. And I was yeah. like, oh, of course. <laughs> there's some people like, I. there's this one guy I've gotten to know, and you get to know people by names if they come by, back enough and yeah. Yeah. see them familiar faces. So, yeah. so do you uh, two have any uh, favorites that you watch out here? Yeah, any favorite drivers? I feel bad. I never get a chance to go out there. Like during break, I'm back here, so it's cooling down and yeah. so I, I've watched a couple times but there was a young girl that raced Taylin Tomerdahl. Yeah. I know or my dad knows her dad really well and I love the races. The racing is like my life. Yeah. <laughs> so oh, it's awesome to work here. Yeah and personally I always I thought it'd be so cool to drive a race car. Yeah. So there's a girl out there doing it, it's kinda good. Cool. Doing something I want to do. Yeah. We actually just talked to Taylor and oh, we're going to oh, do yeah. a part on our show. I've never met her. So. Oh, yeah, she's very nice. Yeah. Very yeah. nice. Uh, any really, really hot race car drivers that come up? <laughs> oh, yeah. That you want to serve? <laughs> who, who are those guys? Apparently, she knows. <laughs> Anybody? She's, looking, she's turning red. <laughs> oh. oh, there's just a few, you know. <laughs> just, just, just a few. few. Just yeah. a few. The thing when we went to get it that night, it was plump full of chickens and they took pictures of it and put it on the website and all that stuff. So they ended up calling it the chicken coop special. The Racing Life is sponsored by Norman County Raceway, Nugget Vending, Dakota Engine Builders, FargoPicks.com River City Speedway Here is this week's Driver Factoid.
name's Haley and I want to know how old you're supposed to be to race. How old can you be before you start racing? I'm Riley Saylor, driver of the go-kart number 76. And the question is, how old do you have to be to race? You can race at age five and go-karting if you want to, but I started at age eight and I'm 12 now and I can still race go-karts and I can race legends if I want to. Thanks for the question. Some people are very superstitious about race day. Here's a look at their interviews. No, it's been a great year. I think the racers, uh, looks like we haven't had any rain yet. We haven't rained out yet this year, so uh, hopefully we can keep it up, but it's been fun. Actually, we've only been rained out once in three years, so. Once in three once years? Once in three years. Tell us a little bit more about that, just a little more. Well, on. no, no the, whole, the story goes is um, Kevin, keeps a, Kevin keeps a rock in his pocket and uh, he rubs the rock, it's the lucky rock. Some people think it's... I, I found know. it on the racetrack when I first bought the place. <laughs> I found it on the racetrack, picked it up, it's been with me every day, every se ever since, and it doesn't rain on Sunday since I picked it up, so it's and my I, lucky rock. Yeah, and it goes a little farther than that too. He, uh, his wife made him read a book about positive thinking. Yeah. So we always say it's positive thinking. Yeah. Yeah. And it works. It works, yep. I thought it out, it works. <laughs> so. I got tons. I could take up the whole show with rituals and traditions. Give us a few examples. Um, you know, when the national anthem starts, I don't talk to anybody. I just, I stay to myself, um, try to kind of get in the zone a little bit. And, uh, you know, it's just weird when you, how often you check your belt buckles and you have to play with your race receiver and put stuff like that on. You know, I know a lot of people, they always put new batteries in their race receiver. That's one of mine, too. If I don't put a new battery in, I, I, I just, Something doesn't feel right, so I always make sure I put a new battery in every night, which kind of sucks. It's a little spendy, but it's just one less thing to, to you know, have on your mind. Um, you know, I know my uh, a couple of my friends race, and they always eat the exact same thing for breakfast. You know, every day before they race, it's just uh, it's funny how that stuff works. And when you don't do it, nothing good ever comes out of the night. No, there's no eating on race day. No eating. Wake up Sunday morning, you don't eat all day. There's just Something about it, I don't know what it is, the nerves, but I don't eat all day. I eat a big, big meal Saturday night. Don't eat all day Sunday. When we go race Friday in Ada, no eating all day. You gotta be careful though, you can't have too many beers when you're done racing with no food in your stomach. Um, no, no eating. And then music, yeah, yeah. And music, a lot of Spice Girls, you know. <laughs> Just a little bebop stuff, you know? Just to lighten that, light, lighten, the, uh, lighten it up a little bit, not get too, uh, you know, can't take it too serious. If you ever have a bad feeling before you race, you just don't feel good, I've learned just don't race. Because there's been a couple of times where you get in your car and it just does not feel right, and both times that's happened, I've been in some pretty bad wrecks. So I've been known to pull up to the track and just uh, have that feeling, and I just pull back and load on the trailer and go home. It's not worth it. I get a lot, of, I take a lot of heat for having a green car, but there's no one else that has one. So, um, you know, speaking of superstitions, though, I'm not wearing sunglasses anymore when I race. The last three weeks I've worn my sunglasses when I race. I've never worn sunglasses. The last three weeks I've ran sunglasses, I've gotten three DNFs. So I'm glad you brought that up. I'm done wearing them. <laughs> never again. One of our last and most memorable interviews was with number four Wayzota street stock driver, Mike Mund at the Beat Harvest 100. I quit in 2003 and I started back up last year. Okay. And the neighbor kids bought a, a street car and I ended up racing that and, and uh, well, the middle of the summer or so we got in a little accident and, and the car was kind of mangled up and we never got time to, to uh, put it back together. And I says, well, we were having trouble with it anyway. So I said, let's dig this out of the shed and try it. So we switched the motors and, and uh, the thing when we went to get it that night, it was plump full of chickens and they took pictures of it and put it on the website and all that stuff. So they ended up calling it the chicken coop special. So me and a few buddies put it together one week and, and uh, the first night out we took it to Lisbon and, uh, and we won the heat and we won the feature. And from there on, it's been doing pretty good. We've won three or four features this year and a bunch of seconds. and, and uh, 
so far it's just going pretty good, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> it was terrible. We brought it to the Melner car wash, and I don't think the Melner car wash will ever be the same again. There was rotten eggs under the seat, and it was terrible. <laughs> I was puking in front of it. <laughs> Local racing history has always been an interest of ours. Ken Hendrickson provided us with some vintage racing film of Buffalo River Speedway and the racetrack at the Old North Fargo Fairgrounds.